Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about work camping at KOA, why we think it is the best place to work as a work camper, and we'll give you some tips on how to get an advantage over all other work campers. Hi, I'm Jim. I'm Corinne. And our channel's RV into retirement. And today we're talking about work camping and specifically work camping at KOA and why we feel it's the best. So this is how uh, it's 2022. The gas prices and fuel prices were very expensive. We were heading from Iowa where we were having some service done to Idaho. And along the way, uh, we just decided, hey, we're not gonna travel that far. Uh, it was something like 1,100 miles, and we decided to try our, our hand at work camping. So we canceled our reservations. We started work camping uh, at another RV resort um, for security overnight, and it just didn't work out. It wasn't, wasn't for us. The other thing that was happening is that I had um, been talking about retirement. You might have heard in any of our previous videos that I was planning to retire. Well, I actually did retire, retired at the very beginning of June of this year. So that was the other thing we started um, thinking about. Well, we had been thinking about what kind of um, income we needed and, and so forth. And then we had prices um, increasing through inflation. So there were a lot of things at work. Um, and uh, things going through our uh, minds when we were reconsidering, I guess, what we want to do this past su this summer. And so, like I said, we I took a job. It was not at a KOA. It was at a uh, just a regular private resort, and and it didn't work out. So now we were stuck without reservations anywhere. And even though the gas prices and fuel prices were high, it seemed like everywhere was full, at least on a monthly basis where we like to stay. Well, we also were, didn't want to travel that far to get to a place. So that was, we started limiting in some ways how far we would travel to get to a place. Um, so that was, there were a lot, there were several things in the works. So we found work at KOA and I'll do a segment towards the end on the website and what the benefits uh, give you and how you can get a leg up on other work campers. But I think it, it really worked out. It, it, we really fell into something really great. First of all, there's KOAs everywhere. So you can, you can keep traveling from one to another um, year round if you wanted to. And uh, right now what we're, we're in Sheridan, Wyoming, and uh, we're at a KOA journey. So in case you don't know, there's three levels of KOAs. Journey are uh, usually along the freeways. They're quick and easy to get on and off. And it's usually for people that are uh, traveling from point A to B and they're mostly overnighters, but we, we get quite a few that stay for a while. Then there's holidays, which is a step up from uh, a journey. And then there is resorts. And the resorts are um, crazy big. So we did, we did interview at all three and we chose uh, the journey here in Sheridan, uh, both because of the personality of the manager and the job duties that we would have. Let's talk about the different types of positions that you can get at a KOA. We're working as a work couple, uh, front desk and maintenance. So Corinne, um, let's, why don't you tell a little bit what you do in front desk? Um, so I'm, I'm mostly there to help uh, guests that check in or that need a reservation um, either on the phone or walk-ins to, um, to get accommodations that are gonna work for them. So it's, I, I love it because, uh, especially comparing to my previous job, my, my career, it just, um, it's, it's fun because I really spend my time um, talking to people from all different air, all different locations, all different reasons that they're here um, and just trying to help them find um you know find a place either it's going to be for overnight or it's going to be um for longer than that and um so i do use the system the koa has their own branded system called k2 
and using that has been um, it's been a little bit of a learning curve because there's a lot of little layers in, in it. But, you know, my previous experience had been with a lot of systems, so it really wasn't it wasn't anything I was worried about. Um, and people will call. Sometimes people will call when you're helping someone. Someone sometimes you are. Um, you know, you, you're on the phone and then someone walks in, sometimes you get a lineup. So all of that stuff is in play. And then um, once we've got them set up with a reservation and we um, take their payment, I will usually have them escorted to the site. And that's where Jim comes in. Right. And there's also, um, you're also working in the store. So Correct. there is a, a lot right. of, you know, can I get firewood, ice, right. ice cream, t-shirts right. and all that. Right. So, and, and some of that is, you know, as also when I, my downtime is, is just looking at the store and, and, and trying to just rearrange and clean up and things like that. So that I would, especially because the shift we work is probably more of a minor part and more just people paying for products. Um, it's according to your shift, what you're going to work, because we have we work later shift, um, whereas, you know, we start pretty much when people start checking in and we go until the night until we even get late check out late um, check ins. So, you know, there is also phone calls that I have to make to people to say, hey, this is what you're going to do if you're going to be late and after hours. So but yes, the earlier shift, if you are uh, working, um, it's the store slash um, reservation desk. If you're working that, um, then you probably have more in the store and just um, getting things ready for the day, um, sweeping, um, you know, um, looking at the product, making sure you have um, everything that you should have in, you know, from the storage in the um, on the racks and so forth. Um, so it, it, it's really, I think that's part of what you need to ask for also uh, or ask about is what specific shifts you might be working to get a better sense of what you're going to be responsible for. Definitely. So we work uh, Sunday through Wednesday, six hours a day uh, for um, the week. And we're working afternoons from 1 till 6 p.m. right now. And so the difference between a day and a night, so I'm on the outside and it's, con you'll see it posted as maintenance. Um, and it, it's not heavy maintenance. It's a, a lot of light maintenance around the campground. Mm -hmm. Uh, but there is a difference between the morning shift and the afternoon shift. So the morning shift is doing checkouts. So they're going around to sites that, um, People stayed at cleaning up the fire pits, just making sure the grounds look good. Uh, if they were in a cabin, uh, going through the cabin, making sure that the cabin is clean and ready for the next guest and uh, filling propane and things like that. On the afternoon shift, uh, I, I still do propane. I do uh, a lot of watering of the grass. The, the early shift does mowing of the grass. Um, I escort people to their sites a lot. So there is, uh, there's a, actually a lot more to uh, just driving them to their site and making sure they get yeah. in uh, good. A lot of people have issues with their hookups and some are new RVers and they're on their maiden journeys. And so you, you help them out. And, and like Corinne said, you do get to talking to them and, uh, yeah. If you're an RVer, you know that when you're in a campground, you always talk RV stuff with everybody else and you make a lot of friends. You see people uh, on their way to uh, Alaska, for mm -hmm. example, and then on the way back from Alaska and they tell you how their trip was been. It's it's really a, a quite enjoyable job. Yeah, I think the, the other thing is the focus is 100 percent on the guest, uh, making sure their experience is great. Um, and, and some, and honestly, and I've, we've dealt with so many people at this point, we haven't really had anyone that's been unpleasant. I mean, even the people that aren't as pleasant as others are still nice. <laughs> so yeah. I think it's, it's, you've got to be able to just listen to what they're asking and what they need. Um, and just try to find a, um, a win-win situation, you know, and solution for them. Um, if you don't have a site, you know, like we had someone the other day, we just didn't have a site to move them to. They didn't like the sunny site. And I just said, you know, I would really do it if I could. I wish I could. 
Um, unfortunately, we just don't have anything. You know, I said, you know, I, but I, I, I made her understand that I had looked, that we had tried our hardest. Um, and I think, and she, at the end, she was like, I understand. And so it was, it was a good situation. So let's talk about some of the benefits of working for KOA. So f one of the big ones is they have locations everywhere. And we talked about once you yeah. learn the system and the ways, then, uh, you know it for ev most every place and you just need to learn the little idiosyncrasies of different mm -hmm. ones. Uh, so your skills are very transferable. We have belonged to workcamper.com and, and that's for private campgrounds. You do see occasionally a KOA, somebody will post in there, but all of them are varied. A lot of them use different systems and and so on. One of the other benefits is they do have this website called work at KOA.com. And we went through that before we actually started interviewing at KOAs. Uh, there's different courses that they have that train you on the different aspects of working at a KOA so that when you interview, you can come from a position of strength because you know some of the things you're not asking a lot of questions, uh, you can actually speak to what your skills are and how they fit the KOA uh, way of life. And the other thing about using uh, uh, work at KOA.com is also you, some of the things gave us more of a philosophy of what they're doing, um, of how they're just how they're set up and, and the reasons. And I think like there was a merchandise, there was some merchandising classes, there were some front office classes. Um, and I just found that very interesting, especially coming from the corporate world. It just kind of sets you where you feel like you can talk to some of that stuff and integrate some of those ideas into um, your conversations when you are interviewing. Yeah, and the work, the work at KOA.com, uh, you, you can create a resume uh, for each of us. You can give uh, your, your team philosophy, mm -hmm. us being a, a yeah. couple. Uh, what your team philosophy is, what your background is. And you also get this uh, thing called campfires after you complete uh, your season, whether it be two month season, three month season, whatever you signed up for. And that gives you an advantage over other people uh, because this is searchable. Work at KOA is not only do you go out and search for jobs at different KOAs, but managers at different KOAs can see your resumes based on what states and what locations that you put down that you uh, desire. So I think that, you know, that's a, mm -hmm. a huge benefit. So let's take a look at the Work at KOA website. The uh, address obviously is workatkoa.com and from here, you don't need to join, but you can get a, a good preview by going over here to become a work camper. And it'll give you uh, some of the benefits, what it's like, um, sample of jobs and such. And, and one of the things is that we feel this thoroughly prepared us before we even started applying to uh, KOAs. They have an education area where we can uh, get certified on various aspects of the KOA uh, culture and their stores and their computers and so on. And it was uh, really, uh, I think, eye-opening and, and made it very easy to transition into a job once we got it. The membership does cost $55, and um, if, if you do join, uh, we ask that you mention us. Our uh, identifier is WK4N3P! Exclamation point. And um, we do get credit, and that helps us run our channel. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. Uh, it's, it's up to you. What we like about this area is that you can go in and you can create a resume. And so um, there are areas to go in and edit your resume. It makes it very easy. It's step by step. It asks you questions and you can do it for yourself and for uh, your spouse or partner.
if you have one. If you see right here, there's campfires and uh, campfires for uh, me and campfires for Corinne. And what a campfire is, is after you complete a job assignment, and that's whatever you signed up for. So if you signed up for three months and you, you completed your three months and, and it was satisfactory, your manager is going to uh, do a campfire for you. And what that is, is a type of referral system. Now, we don't have any. This is our first time doing uh, work at KOA. But I'm sure we'll get a campfire at the end of the season. And in talking to some of the seasoned KOA work campers, you will uh, find out that that really gives you a, a this is what gives you a leg up on other work campers that don't belong to work at KOA um, and are just phoning in and sending resumes to different places uh, by email. They have a lot of resources on here. So there's KOA University, there's tips, um, how to make a good first impression, how to do your interview, how, how to create your resume and so on. You can see down here, there's travel certificates. So if you were a full-timer or even a part-timer and you went from one KOA to another, uh, providing your performance is satisfactory, they're going to give you a travel certificate to um, stay at different KOAs along your route to your next work camping assignment. So that's a, that's a huge uh, benefit right there. They do have supplies. You can go in and you can order uh, work camper merchandise, uh, t-shirts and uh, things like that. But our our uh, KOA provided that for us. And then the probably the most important part is you're going to want to you're going to want to upload your your resume and get that all done. And then you're going to want to go over to the job search area and you can search two different ways. So you can go into the particular state that you want to search. So uh, let's say we wanted to look at California, for example. And I could then go and select the different campgrounds or I can look at all of them. If I hit search right here, it shows you the most current job opportunities first and then uh, goes down in age. So this was posted um, 822 and this is for uh, front desk after July 24th excuse me, after April 24th, 2023. It's either full-time or part-time. And then you can go in and take a look at exactly what the details are. We're looking for a positive, energetic person to be part of KOA um, and so on. And then at the bottom, it shows you what the uh, pay rate and compensation is. And so this one is not mentioning anything about an RV site, so I would have to uh, contact them. Oh, it, it says we'll, we'll provide it, but it doesn't say um, how much. It says $15 an hour and uh, a site at the campground. So maybe it's free. Um, the place that we're staying at, it's $250 a month. The other places that we've seen, it's 125, and usually people give you a 25% a discount. The other way you can search on here is by going uh, to these filters down here. So one of them is search for only jobs. So we're going to be available after um, November 1st and the job length you can put no preference short term seasonal so on i keep that wide open because um i think it's negotiable to a certain extent you could put your work hours either full-time or part-time you we usually choose part-time and then you can choose the duties um i keep that one open and i just will select and then location you can choose where do you want to be? So um, after November, we want to be somewhere where it's warm so we could choose the southwest or um, 
where else? Texas, if I can find it. Texas right there. And then hit submit, and it's just going to bring up a uh, job. So here's one couple of maintenance job, a front desk opening. Uh, this one's saying winter jobs have been filled, but apply for the summer. And there's just all different kinds, and they all uh, are very different in what the the jobs are and what the um, duties are. So you, you do want to open them up and take a look. So this is a work camping couple in Needles, California. This one is kind of interesting. I had looked at it. Uh, each couple will work 12 hours for a week for their site and electric. And you work from seven to one. It mentions nothing about any additional hours or um, hourly wage. So this one would be, you're just working 12 hours and uh, two days a week and you get to stay there. So that is basically it. Um, I think that it, it's well worth the uh, $55 to join this. It, it does give you a leg up. As you can see, there's KOA locations all over the country. So we do uh, highly recommend using this tool to become a work camper at KOA. So this is our campground area. Well, at this particular site, all the work campers are together, which is really nice. It's a secluded part. Um, you can see the propane station, which is one of our duties. Uh, there are five of us here right now and we're all in this little quadrant over here and what makes it really nice is that we're able to get together outside have barbecues um, everybody watches everybody else's rv and so it makes it for a safe location for us we feel very comfortable here it's secluded from the rest of the campground the other thing about this that's so nice is that it's right outside the office so our commute to work each day, the days that we do work, we don't work every day, uh, is like, I don't know, 60 seconds maybe. Yeah, we'll take you on our commute and interview our manager. Let's just talk about a little bit about what first attracted you, what you look for, things like that. But maybe first you can just give a little bit about who you are and maybe just how you even got here. Perfect. Okay. I am Stacy Cabellas and I have worked at KOA for probably eight years. I worked in Buffalo at that KOA and then I went out of a KOA back into a KOA. And then um, I got another job. I, I agree and went to work for um, the people who bought it only in the weekends. And then that was when I learned that that was my dream. I wanted to be a KOA manager. Yeah, so you're you're here. And I'm here. So what attracted you, you didn't really say, but what, attracted, what attracts you to KOA as an organization? I think the franchise and the people that come through and then getting to work with different people all the time. Every day is different. Mm -hmm. Every day is a new day. Yeah. And so Stacy, um, when you're hiring work campers, what do you what are the three jobs that you look for? And can you tell a little bit about each? The three jobs that I mainly look for is housekeeping, office, and then maintenance outside. Um, housekeeping is we have one bathhouse and bathrooms that are all together, so that needs cleaned every day, and cabins depending on how they're cleaned. We have one deluxe cabin that has a bathroom in it that needs cleaned as well. So that's one job. And then the other job is the office and the maintenance. I try to get that as a couple so they can work the same hours, same days, and the um, one of them outside and one of them inside with both of them sometimes learning the computer to know the check-ins and the phone calls and all of that. And then maintenance outside is um, mowing, 
fixing things, making sure all the sites are okay and presentable for the next people. What are some of the qualities that you look for in work campers if you're going to make a hiring decision? Um, I really like retired people um, because they don't want to work 40 hours a week, which this job isn't a 40 hour a week job. And I really look for personalities, personable people. Um, usually you have your first impressions as you do with anybody. Mm -hmm. And um, talk to them a couple times and if they've worked at campgrounds before or stayed in our full-time RVers or just learning, um, they know the campground life because they've stayed at campgrounds. Okay, well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, we, we appreciate you and we also appreciate you that you hired us. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> so one last question. What opportunities do you have coming for next summer, which would be summer of 2023? So right now being the end of the um, season in 2022, um, I am looking for couples to work the whole summer. We open April 1st and through October. Um, I One of my main perks is I try to keep people on the same days on, the same days off, four days on, three days off. Um, and they always work the same shifts. And I am hiring for all of them. I only right now have one um, work camper that's coming back. Um, hopefully more of the ones that were here will come back, but I am hiring at least three to four more couples for next season. Yeah. And we will say, I will say that Stacy's great to work for. Uh, it is just difficult, like everything else out there to get people to work, um, yes, to come yeah. in and, and Sheridan is a beautiful area. So, uh, I can guarantee you won't be disappointed if you come and, uh, you come here. Yes. Give me a call if you want to come work. Well, thank you. Thanks, Stacey. Thank you. Okay. We hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. We would be happy to answer those questions for you. Uh, we hope you do uh, join work at KOA.com and uh, we see you somewhere along the way on the road. Until next time, have a great day. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.